Hello everyone, this is Ashwini Dajgupta from Chinta.com. Today, we will be discussing a very fundamental question from geometry. If you look into any geometry book, they will give you a definition of an angle as arc over radius. Now, we will ask why is it so? Why is it, for example, not chord over radius? What goes wrong? It's a very deep question. It's a simple but deep question that we need to understand. In fact, why is it something by something at all? Uh, before we go and do that, let me give a shout out to Mukesh Nika from the previous video. He posted a very beautiful and a complete solution to the challenge question that we posted in the previous video. And with that, he is now, of course, being mentioned in this video. And he's also in the uh, list for Ramanujan scholarship for this month. Of course, it depends on other responses from him. But like, likewise, you can also answer the challenge question in this video that we will put somewhere in this video. And uh, you'll be mentioned in the next one if you do really well. And of course, you can also be in the list for probable uh, recipients of Ramanujan scholarship from Chinta.com. Okay. So, do answer the challenge question in the comment section. Now, uh, let's go and talk about this fundamental issue regarding angle, the definition of an angle. What we are trying to do is to measure rotation. Now, what is rotation? Rotation is a motion in geometry. And what do I mean by that? It's a way points in the plane are moving. It's a rule in following which points in the plane are moving. Okay, what is the rule? Well, there is a point that doesn't move at all. We call that point center. I sometimes call it the fixed point. Later, when you learn calculus or some other beautiful part of mathematics, maybe algebraic topology or something, you will note that fixed points play a very crucial role in all of mathematics. So, whenever you think about some sort of a motion or some sort of a function, think about its fixed points. Okay? All right. So, all other points in rotation, all other points are moving. So, for example, if you choose any point P, then the way you can find its image is you join OP and you push OP, keeping O fixed. And wherever P goes after a little bit of push is its image. This is called the image. This is the point. Of course, uh, so you can write it like this. Maybe you choose some other point. Maybe it's P prime or Q maybe. So Q, the image of Q will be Q prime. This is the image of Q. So every point is sent to a certain image point. Every point on the plane is sent to a certain image point by the same quantity of rotation. Of course, you do not need to choose points on this particular line segment. You could have chosen points here. This is something that people generally do not do right away or see right away. It's very important to understand. The same amount of rotation, this same rotation is moving this point R as well because all the points in the plane are moving. So, how do you find it out? Well, you join OR. The same push is experienced by R. So, now maybe R the image of R is here. It's R prime. It's the same rotation. It's moving all the points in the plane. That's very important to understand. Of course, R is moved to R prime, which is the image of R. Uh, P is moved to P prime. Q is moved to Q prime. The real question is this. How much rotation has happened? We want to measure rotation. That's our goal. Measure rotation. So, how do we do that? Well, 
notice that point image distance is not a good way to measure rotation. Why not? Well, let's see. If you suppose O is the center, which is the fixed point of this particular motion, and P is a point here, and its image is P prime under a certain amount of rotation. So let me join OP and let me join OP prime. This is the image. Then the distance from point to image, this one, PP prime. Suppose you tell me that the length of PP prime is the amount of rotation that has happened. But then there is a problem with this. If you choose a different point, even on this segment, you don't have to choose on this segment. But even if you choose a different point on this segment, let's say Q and its image is Q prime. Then Q, Q prime, Q has moved to Q prime in the same amount of rotation. Intuitively, we understand that Q has moved to Q prime in the same amount of rotation. But of course, the length of QQ prime is different from the length of PP prime. So what we have to understand is that to measure rotation, point image distance is not a good measuring stick. In fact, I would tell you this. It's a little bit que little question that I have for you. For measuring translation, that is horizontal shift, or parallel shift rather, to measure translation, distance can be a good measuring stick. Okay, point to much distance. Can you tell me why in the comment section? Okay, now that we understand just point to much distance is not a good way to measure rotation, we notice something else. That if we change the point center distance, the point image distance will also change. Both of these things are changing simultaneously. If I change the point center distance, the point image distance will also change. Both of these distance, distances are changing simultaneously. But, and this is something you immediately see using similar triangles, that the ratio of these distances is constant. So, for example, though as you change OP to OQ, as you make it shorter, PP prime became shorter and became QQ prime. So, so the ratio of OP over PP prime, or rather I would take the, op it is conventional to take the opposite ratio, PP prime over OP, this ratio is same as Q, Q prime over O, Q. And you can show this using similarity, similar triangles. So can you give a comment in the description to show that these two triangles are actually similar and that these two ratios are equivalent? Okay, so though the point image distance is not constant, the ratio of point image distance and point center distance, these two are constant. So point image distance divided by point center distance, which is often called the radius. This is constant for a particular quantity of rotation. So what we do is we use this, we can use this ratio for a measurement of rotation. We don't, we don't use these ratio for a measurement of rotation, but we can because for a given quantity of rotation, this ratio is constant. So my question is this, why can't I use the ratio of the point image distance and the point center distance. Why can't, you, can't I use that particular ratio to say this is the measurement of rotation? Why do I have to go to the arc measure? To illustrate what I'm saying, let me draw a picture. Suppose O is the 
fixed point of this particular rotation which is called the center and p is a point on the plane and rotation has happened some amount of rotation has happened so you join op of course you pushed it through some amount so this is now here p prime so p experienced motion similarly any other point on the plane apart from o will experience some motion so q here will experience a motion and go to q prime so the image is here it is p prime and here the image is q prime of course by similarity of triangles we know that this is equal to pp prime by op so why can't i just use this ratio whatever the value of this ratio is maybe it is 1.5 maybe it is 7.2 whatever the number is why can't I just use this ratio and say, okay, this is the quantity of rotation. What do we do instead? Well, instead of this, we use the arc length. So we say that, okay, the arc QQ prime by OQ, which is obviously equal to the arc PP prime by OP, assuming that the bulging is in the same proportion well these two ratios would also be equal maybe we can agree to that intuitively we say okay this ratio is constant for a fixed quantity of rotation you take whichever point if you take another point r this ratio would be r r prime by OR, all of these will be constant. So take that ratio, arc over whatever the distance from the center is, take that ratio to be the rotation, not the chord distance by radius. So why not? Well, let me draw a picture. Let's do, do another rotation. P has gone to P prime. Now I will make P prime go to P double prime. It will move a little bit more. So P double prime is here. So let's join OP double prime. Suppose we are taking the chord value, that is the direct distance value, as a definition of measurement of rotation. We are using that. So what goes wrong if we do that? The first rotation that has happened is PP prime by radius. The second rotation that has happened will be P prime, P double prime by the radius. Right? So you have this distance. Now we are deliberately taking a wrong definition to see what goes wrong. So let's see what happens. So PP prime by the radius. And the second definition, second rotation, this is rotation 1, rotation 1, this is rotation 2. So now if we add the two rotations, what do we get? Well, P is going to P double prime. So here also we should join the chord, the segment, and we get P double, P, P double prime by the radius. So ideally, we would want this first rotation to add to the second rotation and give me this full rotation from P to P double prime. But if we add these two ratios, we'll never get this one. My question is, why? And this is the challenge problem. Why don't we get, why don't we get this ratio by adding the two ratios here and instead of using this chord length if we instead use this arc length why this inequality will hold see this is a very very fundamental question in geometry it's not a very fancy difficult problem it's rather a why question
why a certain formula in mathematics is written in a certain way. And I think as students of mathematics, we should be absolutely asking these sort of questions, fundamental questions. Okay. So if you can think of a reason why this equality will not hold true and why instead of chords, if we use arcs, why that would actually make this equality true, then please mention it in the comment. Uh, hopefully, if your answer is nicely written up and uh, intuitively right, then we will be able to mention you in the next video. And uh, do check out chinta.com for outstanding programs in mathematical Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances and research projects for schools. Um, we are absolutely thrilled to have a very beautiful community of upcoming mathematicians here. Take care and have a good day. Bye.